Do you know, one in hundred children has got autism. I'm Dr. Pallavi Zoshi. I'm consultant psychiatrist with Manipal Vathur. Let us discuss about autism today. Autism, what we typically say is the group of disorders. Autism, spectrum disorder, basically developmental disorders, okay, where the brain develops little differently than what we consider normal. And what we see typically, the three areas. One, where difficulty in communication in some form exists, difficulty in social interaction exists. And third, there are repetitive and restricted patterns of interest as well as behavior. So what we typically say when we talk about early signs of autism, commonest is when the baby is you know three months old, the eye contact is something which is really strong. Okay, it gets established around two to two and a half months, and it gets stronger, particularly with attachment figures. So eye contact is a very important sign when it comes to autism. It is poor, it could be absent. One. Second thing, you know, when the baby is small, you must have noticed if you have handled the baby, you know, they have the anticipatory posture. Please hold me, please take me. So that is absent in autism. Third thing, what we definitely say, you know, the signs of affection, okay? So when the parent comes in, usually the child smiles, okay? Or they have the ways of showing affection. They cuddle, they just rub their cheek against you. So they have their methods of expressing love and affection. That could be absent. Now, these are very early signs, what we typically say. As the baby grows, as the child grows, what typically we see, the language development is delayed in most of the cases, okay? So speech development is delayed. There is a difficulty in normal communication or there is a difference in the communication, what we typically say, you know? They try to communicate in different way, not in so normal ways what we typically understand. So, and, and what else happens in addition to speech delay? There could be pronominal reversal. So if you ask, what are you doing? You is doing this. So you know, they are not able to change the pronominal reversal in that case. Now, when it comes to interactions, what we say uh, autism in other languages, vamagna. So what is that? They are just engulfed in themselves. So interaction with others is quite less. What else happens to these children? They engage in self-stimulatory behaviors. Most of the parents who have seen autism uh, kids who are dealing with autism kids, they see they will do some self-stimulatory behaviors, repetitive same action, repetitively doing the same thing. Now these children, they are very prone for anxiety. So what happens, little disruption in their routine, that could be temperamental issue. They may throw a very bad temper tantrum. What else happens, irritation, getting irritated for petty reasons, that could be there. And what else happens, in addition to these features, okay, there is a heightened stimulation, heightened sensitivity to certain stimuli. So for sound, for something, they might get irritated very easily. Where, whereas to pain, we have seen cases, we know where ruptured appendicitis had happened and the child didn't complain of pain in autism. So what happens, there could be lessened sensitivity to some stimuli, okay? So these are few features. Now in addition to that, many autistic children have comorbid issue. Almost 70% of them have comorbid mental retardation. They also have learning disability. They might have depression and anxiety issues, which are also unaddressed sometimes. And many have, as you know, the development of brain, as we told in definition, is little different. They might have even seizures, the feet. So these are some early signs of autism. But what we typically say, you know, in few cases, what I would like to add, a child may develop normally till 18 months, okay, or nine months, and there could be loss of milestones. So we have cases where the child was having eye contact earlier, where the child was talking earlier. But after 18 months, after 20 months, there could be reversal. So the milestone may get reverted to whatever we say, regression. They might not be able to do the activities what they were doing earlier. Most important is genetics. So there are some four to five chromosomes which are identified, which have some genetic loci which may cause autism. Also, fragile X syndrome, tuberous sclerosis, these are some genetic conditions where the child is more prone for autism. So one, genetics. Genetics are important when we talk about causation of autism. So there are some four to five genes which are implicated where some genetic loci are there which are implicated in autism, one point. 
they are also you know fragile x and tuberous sclerosis these are known medical conditions which make a child more prone for autism one point second what we say advanced maternal and paternal age that is also one of the independent risk factor for autism most of these autistic children when they were taken for some studies they found to have high plasma levels of serotonin so that's also one of the cause indicated which may lead to autism some of the factors you know which are less known what what we we have still not understood maternal infections if the mother has some infection like rubella cytomegalovirus that increases the risk of having uh, autism in the kid perinatal complications having bleeding while uh, a mother is pregnant or a child is having birth trauma asphyxia that can also increase the risk of having autism having a sibling if you have a sibling who has autism it is multifold risk again for the second child to have autism treatment is mainly supportive we don't have curative treatment for many illnesses in medicine autism is one of that but definitely the supportive treatment can be offered and should be offered to each and every kid the mainstay of the treatment is not medicine medicines we give although we are doctors only for supportive management so if the kid is having aggression we have medicines for it for controlling the aggression kid is having adhd attention deficit hyperactivity we have medicines for it anxiety we have wonderful medicines for self stimulatory behavior we have effective medicines we also have medicines for seizures but when you talk about the mainstay treatment for autism we don't have medicines for curing it but therapy is highly recommended for each and every autism kid and how it helps we say typically each and every autistic kid no matter whatever the severity of autism is has the potential to improve no doubt about that so therapy helps each and every autism kid so it should be initiated as early as possible once the diagnosis is done it has to be started okay so we have role of different different specialist in managing psychiatrist developmental neurologist psychologist for taking therapy sessions ot occupational therapist for you know development of some social skills which are really required for integration in society as well as the role of shadow teacher special educators now what is the aim of uh, the therapy one is the speech development should happen so speech therapy should also be there in all these three secondly social interaction should get better because for every parent what is the goal they want the child should lead an independent and happy life so for that also you know social interaction need to be better also with special educator many children are able to complete their education in structured classroom coaching in normal coaching so that is also something what we look forward and a child should develop meaningful relationships in future and should lead an independent life this is the goal of therapy what else nutritional health we take most of these children have leaky gut syndrome so what is that they have constipation they have lot of digestion issue so help of nutritionist is really recommended and simple simple changes they sometime just tell you like introducing ghee or having casein free or gluten free diet and it could be helpful for many people what i would like to really talk about is parents okay and we typically say each child you know each autistic child if has got something special is you know a parent who is refusing to give up on that kid so this is very important when being parents you know uh, sometimes it's very exhausting for most of the parents when when they are uh, taking the charge of the kid and they are investing lot of time in development of the kid so what we typically say please have support group and how it's helpful when you want to take you know break the support group can support the kid look after the kid for some period of time they go for holidays together they discuss the recent developments of treatment together okay so which is very useful the socialization with you know the similar concept the similar pain the similar agenda is very useful for most of the parents